Yes. So today we are going to be going over how I go about drawing a frog. This is a tutorial video that I know a lot of you guys asked for. So in this video, it's pretty cool because I'm going to be taking you guys through the process of how I draw a frog from the very beginning of how I draw out the outline, to how I build my values and my tones with my charcoal, the difference between implied lines and defined lines and how I go about utilizing them in my drawings. And yeah, having said all that, it's about 30 minutes, so we best hop to it, yo. Okay, so for this one, we're gonna be using a graphite pencil, a sandpaper strip, a number four, a number two standard, a number two pointed, and number one smudger, and a hoo hoo eraser, a pentel click eraser, and a mono zero eraser. We are also gonna be using soft, medium, and hard charcoals. And also grab an extra piece of paper. And last but not least, the brush. Okay, so as with all outlines, it's um, mainly up to you as to how you want to approach them. But for me, I like to identify the um, outside edges and main lines within the reference image. So in this case, that is the um, top of the head and the line of the mouth. And also remember what I say, do not be afraid to erase lines if need be. Um, as you'll see, I'm going to be going through and using my Mono Zero eraser uh, quite a bit to make sure that my proportions are accurate to the reference image. Remember what Salvador Dali said, have no fear of perfection, you'll never reach it. So with Salvador in mind, that's going to give us the creative freedom to make mistakes and progress. So as you can see, what I'm doing here is I am outlining the hand of this frog. I'm sticking to the outside lines of the hand. I'm going uh, nice and light in case I do need to erase. And the tone breaks in the orange, blue, and green colors of the hand. In regards to the black and white scale that we're going to be using, being that this is a charcoal piece, I want to take those lines and I want to um, define them within my outline so that when the time comes for me to lay down my charcoal, I'll know, okay, hey, here where this on the outside of this frog's arm where it's going to be green, or I'm going to be using a darker shade, whereas the blue, I'm going to be using a lighter shade. And that's what we're doing with this entire outline. We're highlighting main lines, yes, but then we're going, we're going in and we are taking our graphite pencil and we are highlighting lines where there's going to be significant shadow breaks between white space and uh, pure black space. We're doing that here in the eye, in the nose, and then here under the chin and the belly of this frog as well. And through the arms and the hands of this frog. Now I don't like this, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to completely erase this eye and I'm going to start over. Looks like the eye is a little bit farther down the face than I had it. And that's no big deal. That's no big deal at all. Never be afraid to erase. That's how you can ensure that you are going to give it your best effort and get the best image that you can. So here, we're just going to put that eye where we want it. Looks like we have some white space here that I'm going to highlight with my graphite pencil. I'm going to take my mono zero eraser because I don't quite like that line. I'm going to soften that up and redefine it. Okay, so now I'm going to take my sandpaper strip and I'm going to grind some soft charcoal on here. I'm going to grind some medium as well, along with a little bit of hard charcoal. And now being that uh, the center of the eye for the frog here is completely black. I am going to take some medium charcoal and I'm simply going to fill that in. Now because this part 
of the eye is so dark, there's no real need to layer any charcoal. I have found that it's easier when you go in, if you want to go in with a hard charcoal or a medium charcoal, to go ahead and do that. So now I'm going to take my number two pointed and I'm going to smear some soft charcoal on there. And because the eye has multiple shades of gray in it, I'm going through and I'm going to start the layering process. So I'm simply taking the soft charcoal and I'm uh, very lightly pushing the smudger against the paper. I'm going in nice forward and backward strokes to elongate the eye and make it look like it's nice and nice and round. So now I'm going to continue that process. I'm going to take the medium charcoal pencil here and I'm going to highlight all of the uh, black space in the frog's eye. If you look at the reference image to the left, you can see that the bottom of the eye is um, completely black. That's what I'm doing here, is I'm going in and I am laying down all the black that I will need. And I'm kind of getting that out of the way first. And then I'm gonna take my smudger and I'm gonna soften up this charcoal. And then we're gonna take that extra piece of paper here. And this is a cool trick that you can use before you actually ever touch your piece. You can go in with your smudger and you can make sure that you have the right amount of charcoal on there by just smudging it out, seeing is that is that the kind of shade that you want? Is it light enough? Is it dark enough? Um, is it just right? So for me, I like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in. I'm going to do to this eye what I did to the other one. I'm just simply going in and I'm hitting it nice and soft and I'm making sure that I'm sticking to the contour of the eye. I'm going darker on the outside of it and I'm leaving more white space at the center of it. And what this is going to do is this is going to give us that realism that we want for the eye and we're not going to overwork the eye. So now what we're doing is we're taking our medium pencil and I'm standing it up on end and I'm highlighting a lot of the shaded areas that I laid down with my smudger initially. And what this is doing is this is giving us a really nice look to all of the blood vessels uh, within this eye. It's very easy to uh, overwork the eye, so keep that in mind. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Mono Zero eraser and I'm going to just lighten the center of this eye up a little bit. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the brush and the brush is going to help with your gradation. It's going to give us a nice blend to our tones and soften up the overall look of the eye. Okay, now this is the first tricky part. Now what we're going to be doing is we're taking our medium charcoal pencil and we are holding it sideways. And what we are doing is we are going to start the process of building our tones. Now, when you look at the reference image, the whole top of this frog has texture to the skin, yes. But at the same time, it's also uh, smooth, even though it has a lot of rough pores all over the top of it. So with this technique, with holding the pencil sideways and very slowly pushing the pencil across the paper, it's going to leave um, a rough look to the paper, but uh, have no fear of that because with the smudger work and the brush work to come, you'll see how we're able to manipulate this charcoal that we're laying down initially, and you'll see how it will um, tie in to the overall aesthetic that we're going to be giving this drawing. So as you can see with this technique doing the same thing, the harder you press, the darker the charcoal will lay. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our number two standard smudger and we are going to very lightly press this charcoal into the paper. Um, be careful that you don't um, push too hard. Um, this is very light very light and what we're doing essentially is we're smearing the charcoal that we laid down with our medium pencil but this is helping with 
our gradation within our tones, while at the same time really bringing out the tones of dark to light that we want to give the top of this frog's head that proper form. We don't want this drawing to look flat, we want it to look uh, three-dimensional, which is hard to do sometimes. But we're just taking this smudger and we are just very lightly blending all this charcoal together. Don't be afraid to use your extra uh, piece of paper and make sure that you don't have too much charcoal on your smudger. With this part of the drawing technique, you won't find too often that you'll have too little charcoal. Most of the time it's, it's too much. So that's why that paper comes in handy because you can take it, rub off the extra charcoal and then continue to blend your tones. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the brush and this is just helping with the overall blending. And as you can see, this brush also gives the frog a nice smooth look and it really blends our tones. Then we're taking the Mono Zero Eraser here. And with the Mono Zero Eraser, you can just go in and you can lighten up spots that maybe are a little bit too heavy with your charcoal. And you can erase lines, you can add lines, and um, you can play with that form with the eraser. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a hard charcoal and we are going to be defining the mouth of this frog. And the more you play around with this uh, specific three-layered technique, the more you'll discover that uh, medium or hard charcoals tend to work the best for, um, for heavily saturated line work, such as uh, the mouth um, in this case. And now what we're doing is we're going to take the medium charcoal and we are going to continue with that same technique that uh, we use to lay down the charcoal on the top uh, portion of the frog's head. We're bringing that around the jaw here. We're gonna take our Pentel click eraser and we're gonna clean this up. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to do another technique where we are laying down initial charcoal from the get-go with our brush. This is one of my favorites. You're able to move a lot of charcoal very quickly and it looks uh, beautiful in the process. So what we're doing is we're just going uh, in a nice up and down motion and we are really defining that, uh, that jaw. What this is doing is this is um, bringing out the lip of the bottom jaw of the frog, while at the same time giving us a very nice, smooth blend in our tones. And this is a blend of tone that we can build upon. Now, as you can see, I'm taking some medium charcoal of course, the big difference between the medium charcoal and the soft charcoal is that the medium charcoal has more binder in it, and thus it tends to stick together better and producing a darker tone in our shades. So we're taking that and we're just building up on the soft charcoal that we initially laid down. And you can swap back and forth. You just have to play with um, what kind of aesthetic pleases your eye or your client's eye if you're doing a commission piece. What we're doing is we're just taking this brush and we are just adding to the tones. All the while we're referring to the reference image and we are making sure that we have the kind of um, look that, uh, that we're going for. As you can see, the left side of the jaw is a little bit darker than the right side of the jaw in the reference image, so we're just going to build upon that. And you can go uh, as dark as you want. Really, realistically, when you look at the bottom portion by the right arm of this frog, that is extremely dark. And we'll go in with uh, smudger work and we'll really build upon those extremely dark tones with some medium and hard charcoal. But here what we're doing is we're just taking uh, the brush and we're fluffing up um, that texture around the jaw. We can take some hard charcoal and do the exact same thing. Hard charcoal has more binder in it than medium charcoal does, so it lays on top of both those quite nicely. 
but here we're going to define the jaw. And the more you work a specific part of this drawing, the more it'll build and the, and the stiffer it will become. But here we're just going to add some more soft charcoal, medium charcoal. We're, going, we're pushing a lot of charcoal right now. And we're going to take our smudger, we're going to put it on our test paper to make sure we have a nice shade that we want. And we're going to build up this dark tone, like I said, with smudger work. And then there's some really interesting texture on the frog's lip here. So we're just going to take our smudger, we're going to stand it up on end, and we're just going to push this up. And this will give us a really nice texture. And then here's another cool trick for spots. You can stand the smudger up on end and you can just twist it. And that'll give you a you know nice, uh, nice breaks in your texture, which the eye will pick up of your viewer. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take a number two smudger, do a little test run on our scratch paper here. And what we're doing is now we are looking at the form of the upper arm of the frog. And I actually don't like how these lines look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw them out real quick, redraw them. Now I'm going to take my smudger and I'm going to pack in some nice light value here. Hit that with my mono zero and now I'm going to trace out some highlights. Now I'm going to jump back to the smudger. And I'm going to continue to build these tones and bring out the form of that arm. I'm going to take some hard charcoal here. I'm going to stand my smudger up on end. I'm just going to continue to build those tones in the darker areas of the um, hand in my reference image. And remember, I like to work dark to light. I find that if I build my darker shades first, it makes it a little easier. That's the wonderful thing about uh, working with charcoal is with the black and white scale. Um, with white space, you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is avoid it with your charcoal and, um, and you'll really get a nice look at the end of it all. But here what we're doing is we're just continuing to check our value of tone that we want to apply with our scratch paper and then we're going in with our smudger and we are very carefully continuing to build all of the spots in the hand that uh, require that darker value um, from us. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take um, our medium pencil and we're actually going to define uh, the line work here in these hands. Um, and this part of uh, my technique uh, is a little controversial. I've talked to artists about it. Basically what it is, is it, it, it is the age old question of do you do defined lines or do you do implied lines? Defined lines of course are uh, lines such as these. They're um, bold, they're in your face. Um, some of the big critiques of defined lines as opposed to implied lines is that defined lines tend to look cartoony and not uh, realistic. Um, I disagree. I think that if you use them in the right ways, um, different thicknesses of defined lines, I think that it can give your drawing a whole new aesthetic that um, you wouldn't get if you use solely implied lines where implied lines are where you basically let the value of your drawing um, define the lines for the eye rather than um, over analyzing the lines and over accentuating them with um, oversaturation. But we'll get into that on another video. So here we've defined all the lines in the upper hand and now we are doing the exact same thing on the bottom hand. Now the texture on the bottom hand is a little different than the one on the right. And so what we're doing is we're using that technique that we used on the top of the head, we're laying our pencil sideways, laying down that charcoal, and now we're taking our smudger and we are uh, blending uh, all of our tones and we are layering up on 
the texture because this bottom arm has much more texture in it than the uh, top arm. Now that we've smudged all of our tones together with our smudger, we're going to do a nice soft blend and uh, focus on the gradation between those tones with our brush. That's what our brush allows us to focus on. And now much like with the top hand, we're going to be taking our smudger and we are going to be building up the tones. Uh, we're focusing on the dark values first. And then we're also going very lightly and we are defining the what will eventually be the edges of these fingers and uh, we'll bring those these fingers to prominence with um, our line work but the biggest thing when doing hands is um, just go slow of course as always take your time very few things that you lay down with charcoal um, can't be undone. I would say probably one of the most permanent things that you'll ever do with charcoal with this technique is the line work. But the cool thing about line work is with the approach that I use is it's always the last thing that I do. And so don't worry about that so much. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a mono zero eraser and we are going to define these lines. And now I'm going to take some soft charcoal here with my brush and I'm testing it to make sure it's the tone that uh, I desire. And then I'm going to be taking that and what this is doing is this is putting a nice blend on everything. And if you put a lot of charcoal on it, you can put it on the tops and the bottoms of these fingers here and you can see how that really gives us a, a full scale from white to pure black um, for the eye to pick up with this hand. And the Mono Zero Eraser of course picks all this up. I'm going to be taking the Ahuhu Eraser. Love this thing. I don't use it very often but when you need it, it is wonderful. It's a great power tool to use for drawing and it'll definitely help you elevate your drawing. So now I'm gonna take the number one smudger that my cat got a hold of and chewed up. And we are going to be blending with some medium charcoal, continuing to build up these lines and these shades. And remember with fingers, the top and the bottom of the finger are going to be usually your darkest values, especially in this drawing, and that will bring out the roundness of the finger. And now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a medium charcoal and we are defining lines. And this is totally personal preference. You don't have to define the lines like this if you think that it does look too cartoony. Um, but it's an aesthetic that, um, that I really like. And for me and my eye and how I view my art, it works for me. But you don't have to do this if you don't want to. Okay. So now that those lines are defined, we're gonna be taking our medium pencil where you're going to be doing a little different technique. This technique is similar to the technique that we did on top of the head. However, the circles that we're putting on the belly here are the initial layer to the overall look that we are going to be giving um, the bottom of this frog. We're just doing nice, tight, light circles and this is adding texture, so this is what we're doing. We're doing circles like this. So some are big, full circles, other ones are tied together, and then you can also move sideways if you want for smaller circles, as not all of these circles that we're uh, applying to for the texture of this frog are the same size. Um, we wanna keep that in mind. But it's funny what the human eye will pick up in drawings and it's always good to add texture to your drawings because it just it elevates it 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 brings it to that next level and now what we're doing is we're just going through and we're just doing those nice tight light circles um, we don't want to go too dark because all the variations in tone that we laid down with the brush we want to make sure that we maintain those even with the texture on top of them 
And with this three layer technique, um, it allows you to be able to do that so long as you don't press too hard um, on your application. But here you can build upon tones if you want, or if you want to just focus strictly on texture, um, you can do that as well. Okay, and we're just going to lay it sideways. We're going to continue to build this. Now we're going to take the brush and we are going to lightly blend this together. If you push a little harder on certain areas, like say under the armpit of the frog, you can really bring out a darker tone if that's what you desire. Take the mono zero eraser. I have some defined lines that I want to put in to really make this cheek pop of this frog. Now it's a little light, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my smudger and I'm just going to uh, just, just blend this together real nice, but still keep that white space. Grab some medium charcoal here. I'm just going to continue to build up the value of dark underneath the armpit here. And now what I'm doing is I'm taking my smudger and I'm going in circles. I'm standing it up on end and I'm just going in nice loose circles where if you look on the reference image this frog has some pretty prominent circles on its belly and now what I'm doing is I'm taking some hard charcoal and I'm just adding a lot more value to this dark space now I'm gonna take the brush and I'm going to blend all that texture that I laid down with that circle technique with my medium charcoal I'm just gonna blend it all together and now what I'm doing is I'm going to take my ahuhu, and this is where the magic happens. So now what I'm doing is I'm going and I'm taking my ahuhu eraser, and I am hitting the center of all those circles that I just hit with my uh, medium pencil and defined with my smudger work. As you can see, this expands the value of the black and white scale from complete white all the way to the richest blacks throughout the underbelly of the frog. And because the Ahuhu is um, battery powered, this is effortless. You barely have to touch the paper and it is going to give you all sorts of texture. Up here above the jaw, we're just going really lightly, very small. We're just going to continue to build the texture for this frog all around. Also be sure when you are pushing a lot of charcoal, this, this application is fairly light, but if you were going into a really dark area where you had laid down all three layers of charcoal, be sure to take your eraser, hit that scratch paper and make sure that it's nice and clean. That way, if you really need to go in, you need to get like a really, really white spot. Let's say, um, for example, in the center of like an animal eye or a human eye, um, you don't want to hit it and have it be kind of kind of gray. You want it to hit and be nice and clean. So, and white and vibrant. So this is definitely uh, another reason why the scratch paper comes in handy for you. And then we're just going in here and we're just hitting all the white space and the highlights in the hand with the Ahuhu eraser. Once you use one of these, you'll never, you'll, you'll ask yourself how you ever drew without one. Guaranteed. Now what we're doing is we're going to put on some more defined lines. We're going to take a hard charcoal and we are outlining the white space. Again, this is something that some artists might say looks cartoony, but I absolutely love it. For a black and white charcoal piece, it just really makes your white space pop because you have complete white space and then you have complete black space and the two are it's perfect in the wake of contrast for the eye to pick up and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my smudger work and I'm just going to draw out the branch that this frog is on it's like a little tule or something and I'm just building it up building it up the cool thing about the texture on this is that it is um, completely different from the frog so there's no real need for me to go in and add a whole bunch of crazy texture because it's smooth. All I'm really going to need is smudger work, um, 
maybe I like say what I'm doing here is I'm taking some medium charcoal and I'm really defining the dark value in it. And then I'm gonna be hitting it with a brush and I'm gonna be blending it all together so it's nice and smooth and, and uh, stands out as being something separate, a separate texture from the frog itself. And here, as you can see, these are implied lines where I'm not going to be hitting them with a hard charcoal or a medium charcoal. I'm simply hitting them with a brush. Now what we're doing is I'm just going through and I'm working on my gradation within the frog. I'm blending out tones that I see and, and darkening up areas that, uh, that need to be a little more um, prominent in the wake of their dark tone so that I get a really nice, realistic image. Here, I'm just gonna soften up these eyes, make them a little darker. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my hard charcoal I'm going to define the neck of the frog with a defined line, just over the top. There we are. Now I could have left this as, um, I could have left this soft, but for me and for what I like, I really like to define it because it just brings the animal forward, I feel, and being that the animal is the focal point of my image. Um, I wanted to accentuate that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a hard charcoal and we are going to go like this here. We're gonna, basically what we're doing is we are just highlighting the white space uh, very lightly. Um, but what this is doing is this is just building up on uh, the texture um, of the frog. It's just another layer um, for the eye to pick up. Um, when someone is uh, viewing uh, your drawing. Here what we're doing is we're going to take a hoo-hoo and we're just going to lighten it up in some certain areas. And basically guys, this is just detail work. Um, as I always say, you can always add more detail. Um, for the sake of this video and the context of time constraints, um, I can't do this drawing justice like I would like, but um, if, as long as you guys are able to walk with some thorough understanding, of um, the key principles that uh, I use in my techniques. That is all we're really going for in these tutorials. So I hope you guys um, picked up one or two things uh, from this tutorial that maybe um, you didn't know before. If it gave you guys any ideas of any uh, different techniques that you can use, uh, feel free, please, um, to share them with us. And uh, we can definitely use them in some of our next drawings. I like to think that an artist's work is never done, and I think they should always try their best to study other artists and learn as many techniques as they can so that they can constantly be growing and evolving as an artist and a person. So there you are. Voila. So guys, that is pretty much it. That is my process from the very beginning of when I get my reference image and I lay out my outline all the way through to how I build my tones, focus on my shade work, my form, my defined lines, and how I use smudgers and brushes and all that to bring it all together. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope that you were able to learn one or two things from it. And remember, if you guys are just starting out and you are a little unsure, or maybe if your drawings aren't turning out exactly how um, they look in the tutorial videos that we make, don't worry about that. What is important as a young artist is that you're always growing, you're always striving, and you're always trying out new things and pushing yourself and your own abilities so that you can become the best artist that you can be. So having said that, that is it. That is all I got for you guys this week. And remember, if you guys enjoyed this video and you find yourself enjoying all the videos that we make here at Messer Creations, I encourage you to like, 
and subscribe. And be sure to hit the bell when you subscribe. Ding! <laughs> so you guys can be notified when our latest and our greatest videos come out. My name is Brayden, and you guys have just been tipped off. I hope you guys had fun, and I will see you in the next one.